So, hello, I'm going to talk about the Goldman Katana from John Lee. After the positive uh, first impression that we'll see in Mori Wakasashi, uh, I wanted to see what you got for a bit more money. John Lee seems to be everywhere in European uh, resellers. Our info about them is seriously lacking, uh, so let's take a look. So here it is. I bought this from uh, Outfit for Events for uh, th around £300. It arrived without package and in a swore box. The uh, more or less the standard long quan swore box. There's also a sword bag following. It's not of the greatest quality, but it doesn't really matter. You get enough small sword bags after a while. So, disclosure. I'm not trained in Japanese swordsmanship, uh, as there is no schools in my area. Uh, but I have tried to pick up a fair bit from YouTube. Um, not that that matters too much. So, um, my experience is rather low. Uh, I do have experience with Chinese swordsmanship, uh, but that's not particularly relevant in this case. I'm just a hobby collector, uh, enjoying swords. Uh, I have no affiliation with John Lee, uh, or any other sword maker for that matter. Um, that's probably really obvious though, since this is a uh, microscopic channel. Alright, now the sword. And this sword is paying a tribute to Ishikawa Goldman. So, who is it? Uh, Goldman was a famous Japanese thief that lived around the 1500s in Japan. He has been called the Japanese Robin Hood since he stole from the rich and gave to the poor. He also supposedly tried to assassinate Hideyoshi, a uh, famous warlord at the time, but failed and was executed. Some of my favorite movies, uh, the Shinobi no Mono films, have uh, Goemon as the main character. Uh, the first uh, three movies uh, depict his life, the third one being a, a bit of a what-if scenario. Uh, this is where I learned of the character and what sparked my interest uh, in him. Uh, it's mainly the reason uh, why I wanted to check this sword out, uh, as, I, as I had not seen this theme anywhere else, really. Now, there should be some stats uh, on screen somewhere around now. Alright, I'll start with the tsuka or handle. It's a mostly straight tsuka with a brown sweater wrap and black and gray skin. I'm going to be real here, uh, it's really rough. A sweater wrap on a 300 euro sword is not particularly great, uh, as most katana in this price range have cotton, uh, sometimes even silk wrap. That's not really the real problem though. Uh, it feels really sloppy done, and it's supposedly sharp to grip. It's really hard. Uh, it's not too tight either. Uh, the ray skin is rather low quality, the nodes are small, uh, so painting it black was probably the right decision here. It's a panel and not a full wrap, surprising absolutely no one, uh, as full wraps or ray skin seems to be really, really rare on the market. Uh, the pegs holding the tsuka in place have been colored black, uh, not that that really matters much when the ray skin area around them are uh, ripped on the sides. Now, onto the fittings. The uh, manuki uh, are probably supposed to depict Goemon, but are not well cast at all, and not well painted. Uh, the same goes for the Kashara. Sadly, it's uh, really muddy. Uh, it's really hard to really see what it's supposed to be. The uh, Tsuba have two different pictures on each side. One shows uh, Goemon doing some Kujikiri hand symbols, and the other shows his execution. After his failed assassination attempt, uh, he was boiled alive with his son. In an attempt to cause his son as little pain as possible, he held him as high as he managed, then suddenly plunged him down uh, before he succumbed to the boiling water, uh, in an attempt to uh, instantly kill him. As with the Manuki and Kashara, uh, the casting quality is really disappointing, 
uh, and overall the Sukan fittings leave a lot to be desired. The Saya or scabbard is actually really nice. It has a black lacquer with buffalo horn on both ends. I have no way of really checking if it's buffalo horn, uh, so I have to trust the manufacturer here. Uh, but it seems to be. Uh, the Saigo is uh, black and brown, and it's a rather nice quality. Uh, not much else to report here, really. It's a really nice piece. Okay, so to the blade, the main dish. Uh, it's made of uh, 9260 carbon spring steel. It has a double bowie, the larger one terminating one third of the way up. Uh, the blade spine tapers down as the larger bowie disappears. However, it flattens again when arriving at the tip. Overall, this makes the blade feel a bit unique. The hamon is unfortunately cross-wire grinded on. Uh, a real hamon is common enough on blades around 300 pounds, so I'm not really impressed here. Uh, it says uh, Ishikawa Gomo on the blade in kanji. It seems to be laser thin. Uh, it's common enough uh, on swords in this price range. I have done cutting on light targets for several months. And it cuts really well, uh, which is a positive uh, after a rather lackluster appearance. The blade is uh, very sharp and feels agile. It's a fun cutter to be honest. Since the quality overall has been hit and miss, I would not really dare to do any heavy cutting, uh, as I suspect it would not hold up. So, to conclude. Uh, the katana is really hit and miss, uh, with emphasis on miss, sadly. Uh, the execution is uh, not really worth 300 euros, in my opinion. Uh, I don't recommend it. There are far better swords out there from this price range. However, I got to admit, I personally don't really regret this purchase. It's really fun to cut with, uh, and I enjoy the fittings, uh, as somebody and goofy as they are. So um, I guess that's about it. Uh, have a wonderful day and uh, thank you for your time.